This is a study of a woman that I'm doing a sketching with watercolor pencils. And here you can see the reference image, which is from a book from the library. It was a book of photography of uh, indigenous people, um, you know, from uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. I've been doing a series of videos now using watercolor pencils, and I, and I intend to keep doing them for a while. Um, it's not the only type of video that I do, but um, uh, lately I've really enjoyed this medium. Um, right now I'm just kind of setting up my workspace, you know, setting up my reference image so I can view it while I, um, you know, have my uh, canvas and my uh, pencils and my water brush all in the frame. Uh, these are Royal watercolor pencils uh, that I got from Michaels. Um, I, I really enjoy using them. Uh, it's, uh, talked a little bit about in some of my other videos, but um, you know, I started off just with like some dollar store color pencils when I got into sketching. Uh, but then when I moved over to the watercolor pencils, this is still my first pack of them, but um, I'd say it's definitely worth it. Um, they're cheap, they're like five or six bucks for the pack, and I've done many, many sketches with them, and I still have a lot more to go. Um, and then I also got the watercolor brush, or excuse me, the water brush, and that was about seven dollars. Um, and again, reusable, um, I, I anticipate it'll last for a while. Um, but uh, all in all, you know, you can get into this medium uh, pretty affordably, um, and it's a lot of fun. So I'm doing my rough sketch with a red. Um, a lot of my sketches are somewhat uh, limited in their color palettes. I do a lot of like blues with my figure, with my people, my sketches of people. But this one, uh, you know, right off the bat, I decided to lay down the sketch with a red, which is a little unusual for me. And um, you know. I, I, I'm I'm pretty pleased with the result, but just it's a way for me to, you know, branch out and do some variety. So again, I'm just lightly sketching out the features. Um, I tend to spend uh, a lot of time on the details of face and hands, which are the most difficult parts for me to draw with. Um, with my sketches. So usually both in my initial sketch and then when I use the water brush, uh, I'll spend a lot of time first on uh, those details like the facial features or the hands. Um, It's a Saturday morning. I just got back from having a cup of coffee and I was looking through the footage of an, another uh, video. It's, it's another sketch that I had done. It's uh, the sketch of Sergeant Elvis Presley. And that was the first video where I did this long form video, real time. I'm just uh, doing a voiceover over the whole video as opposed to a time lapse speed painting. Um, uh, and I was very pleased with the process. I found it very rewarding doing that, that long form video. So this one's also going to be just real time long form. Um, but that doesn't mean that that's all I'm going to do. Uh, I have another sketch that I did around this time that uh, I wasn't as pleased with the result. It was a, a, a figure, but it was a full body figure and I, I don't think it came out as I'd hoped. So that I'll probably just do a speed painting with some music, um, make a shorter video, um, because I still want to share it and there are still positive qualities with the uh, other sketch. Um, but for this one, this one I enjoyed, uh, this study of this woman. I, I found the reference image to be striking. Um, and I enjoy, I think, some of the sketches I enjoy most doing or I'm most comfortable with the results and the process are these kind of medium close-up portraits of a single individual with a very little or abstract background. So medium close-up by that I mean from 
you know, uh, the middle of the chest up with the, the face being the, uh, the primary focus. Um, so I definitely want to expand and eventually, uh, you know, branch off into other forms, but, but figurative portraits like that, you know, um, you know, facial portraits, you know, that's a, a very fun medium. And it's, you know, it tells the story, the face tells a story of, you know, a person, it's a, it's a very universal human, you know, a human anywhere in the world can look and identify, you know, the, the face of another person. So, so I, I think that that's certainly a very rich, deep area for me to explore. And I'm still very much just uh, in the beginning of my skills. I'm very, very amateur in my skills. Uh, so now you can see I've kind of gone off into the hair and that I went back to the blue which I, which I find is one of my stronger colors or a color I rely on most. I, I really enjoy working with blues and that's light blue and dark blue um, for, for lighting and color um, and maybe that's a function of a personal color palette that I enjoy but also you know just the pack of pencils that I got those are the colors that um, I liked working with most out of that pack. So I don't know if in the future I got a different pack or I had more variety of colors if I would uh, gravitate towards other ones. But in this particular pack of colored pencils, the dark blue and the light blue um, tend to be my anchors. So one aspect of the, um, that other video I was referencing, the, the sketch of Sergeant Elvis Presley, um, which was another longer video with my voiceover, um, I, I discussed there a little bit how, in terms of the video creation process, I do the sketch, and then I do the voiceover, and then I find background music to lay underneath, just to kind of flesh it out. And that's what I'm going to do with this video also. And, and what, I'm, what I'm getting at is I haven't yet selected the music that I will um, put underneath. Um, I did find I wasn't totally satisfied with uh, the results last time in terms of finding the problem with a longer form video is finding a, a video or excuse me, uh, a music track that I can lay under that's long enough that's, you know, Creative Commons copyright free where there's not going to be any copyright issues. Um, it was hard to find that and then uh, mixing it in you know the music into periods of uh, silence in my voiceover all of that you know you know it came out all right but I'm just saying I'm gonna try again I don't know if this, the result in this video will be better or not I think I'm gonna go for some classical music for this piece uh, or, or acoustic or maybe um, you know, hand drums, something like that. Uh, and if, if I can find a track that's long enough, um, I believe this piece overall is going to be about half an hour. So we'll see what I'm able to come up with. Um, and if I ever do strike the magic formula in the process, I'll, I'll be sure to share that. Um, now this reference image has, uh, you know, some striking earrings and you can see I just put the earrings in and it's intentional kind of experiment to kind of make them pop a little bit. Uh, accent I used um, some vibrant yellow and some of the colors respond to water differently but yellow definitely does uh, stand out a little bit um, also her uh, cloak uh, you know it's it's pretty abstract but you know it's just kind of the impression of a, a cloth you know you know blanket or shroud kind of covering um, so going over the red with a brown, uh, it's kind of the same idea that I do with like a dark blue, light blue. It's kind of finding these colors to contrast and fill in the detail and have an, uh, a, a lighter layer underneath and then a darker on top. And usually when I put the, the water brush, you know, to mix it all together, it kind of blends it well and brings it out and flushes it out. Um, now, I don't focus or 
spend too much time on you know technical proportions of the facial features, I'd say that's a weakness of mine and that uh, I would like to uh, improve in that area. And by that I mean um, both studying the reference image and kind of calculating and measuring out the distance between the eyes, the size of the eyes in relation to the nose and the mouth and the placement and how it all lines up with the ears. Um, I think in terms of improving as an artist, that is something that I should pay some attention to and, and practice working with. Um, however, at the same time, where I'm at right now, it's, it's a little bit more stylized and, and just kind of, uh, you know, impulsive from the gut, just laying out the sketch. Um, so, um, I enjoy the results, but I do recognize that it is an area where I could improve, um, and, and hopefully I will. Um. So as far as uh, the types of videos on this channel, um, if you click around and see, you know, I've experimented, I, I really enjoy video as a medium. It's my favorite medium. And uh, as I got into sketching and watercolor pencils, it was very uh, much on my mind. Uh, thinking about how can I incorporate this into video work, video art, um, because I, I think that juxtaposed sights and sounds, uh, audio visual, um, film and video is, is a medium that I think is my primary passion. Um, so sketching, two-dimensional sketching, painting, uh, I appreciate that also, and I don't want to limit myself to one medium, but um, very early on, um, or, or all along, I would say, um, as I developed and got into this f art form, I thought about how I can incorporate video into it, and that goes to the setup. You know, um, you know, my wife and I we moved into a uh, an apartment that we like. You know, earlier this year. And uh, we, in getting our furniture, we intentionally got this little white table. It's very basic. We got it at a thrift store, but it was uh, purchased with the idea in mind that uh, we might be making videos uh, overhead, you know, with an overhead setup and something that would be good, uh, plain with white, um, you know, an art table, in other words. So, um, and then we. Uh, you know the camera set up you know maybe in the future uh, I'll go into that a little bit behind the scenes of how I do the camera setup but it's just a webcam uh, an old webcam I had set up on a tripod and then the tripod is kind of been uh, DIY uh, rigged uh, with a monopod and a piece of PVC pipe to do like an overhead um, and then the tables long enough that I have the laptop over to the side off camera so I can see how the video quality looks and then also have the reference image. So it's just a long thin white table by the window. Um, the lighting setup isn't ideal. I mean using natural light from the window is great. Uh, it's a high quality great source of light however it's inconsistent and in some of my videos uh, the sun moves. Uh, it's even more prevalent if I do like a time lapse and speed it up so you can see how uh, the image can get washed out. You know, it would be nice to have the option of artificial light. Um, you know, get some lights and lamps and all that kind of stuff that could be constant and controlled. And and we, we've been looking into that, but it's not like a high priority. Um, and and I'm I'm pleased with the setup. It's nice to look out the window and uh, do these sketches. So you can see the facial features are coming in a little bit more, um, putting in some more detail, um, the ears, the kind of lines of the face. This is definitely an image of someone who has 
a weathered look, someone who has experienced life um, and, and wears a, uh, you know, a history on their face, I, I guess you'd say. And then that's what it drew me to the image. Um, as I've said before, I like to get my reference images usually from the library. And that's, you know, there's a couple of reasons. One, I really enjoy the library. Um, my wife and I, we like to go a couple times a week. Um, you know, we can rent videos and then also get books. Um, you know, for other art forms, when I've looked for reference images, I have in the past used, you know, Google or the internet and gone to sources. There's vast amounts of public domain images on, online. And that's cool, but um, for doing this type of sketch with a reference image, the watercolor pencil, I really like a physical um, reference image, a, a, a physical picture. And, and, you know, a lot of it's just technical little things, like for example, um, you know, this video takes half an hour, so if I have the reference image on a screen, most devices go to sleep, and then I keep on having to swipe it to bring it back up, drains the battery, it's electronic, you know, all these little things. Uh, I'm sure they could be overcome with the right settings and turning off go to sleep on the device and all that kind of stuff, but, you know, I, there's something about just having a physical image to reference. Um, also, I like the limited uh, world of a library, or limited world, I mean, um, what's, what's the... The library is an enclosed environment of, of books, so my options to select from, you know, the internet is vast and I can spend a long time going through always looking for a better image or a better image. Um, but the library is a closed universe, and that, that's the term I was looking for. So it's, it's still a big universe, there's still a lot of variety, um, but it's a closed universe, and I like having those limitations, um, which forces me to select uh, source material that maybe I wouldn't ordinarily, you know, um, pay attention to. Um, so I, I've, I've found sometimes limitations in art uh, can provide the foundation for uh, creative breakthrough or artistic development and uh, you, you know if you just you know, whenever the impulse as an artist is oh I can't do this work because I don't have this product or this amount of money to buy this thing that I need uh, whether it's you know fancy paints and brushes or video equipment or whatever um, sometimes those challenges and limitations provide uh, an opportunity for great breakthroughs. So you can see the sun kind of passing through, like I was re referencing earlier, um, a, a little bit bright. Um, but um, I'm going into the pink, uh, and the pink I've found uh, out of this color palette in the color pencil box, you know, it, re it really works well after I've laid down the light and the dark. Um, colors for the, the facial features, the, the pink kind of blends it all together with a fleshy tone. Um, so I, I've been very pleased with those results. The yellow also, I'm not just using uh, for the uh, earrings, but since I have brown and red, I'm using the yellow for, for light highlights kind of at different, you know, put it in the eyes, put it a little in the mouth, and then a tiny bit in the clothes. Um, I'm not an expert with color, um, and I'm experimenting. So when, when I'm doing these things, usually it's from the gut and kind of an experimentation. But uh, you can see my process. I'm usually trying to stick to certain palettes, like the red in, I used in the jacket shroud. So it's like, OK, I'll bust out an orange because that's kind of you know, in the similar end of the spectrum. So I'm trying to mix colors that go together well. Um, complementary colors and that that's really one of the things that this medium has allowed me to do is experiment with colors uh, and the mixing and blending of colors because when I go back to the uh, the water brush um, you know the water you know the brush and the water will will, will mix and blend and uh, you know bring it all together um, and it's very magical and I guess what I'm trying to get at is 
I mean, I usually or, or almost always, I don't even know what the uh, effect will be because I'm not a... Uh, my understanding is pretty basic in, of colors. Um, but you can see I, I'm as I'm talking, I'm kind of switching between the brown and then back to the red and having used the orange. And that, that's what I'm experimenting with in the, uh, the clothing here. Um, now, if you're interested in color, one way to get started in learning about it is uh, I would say, you know, look at a color wheel. Um, and you can just Google those. And that shows colors that complement each other and colors that are opposite of each other. Um, and, and that's a good reference image um, or, or, or a starting place to reference if you want to experiment with color. So now I'm using the water brush. Um, and the water brush, this is a really cool tool. You don't have to use it. If you look at my uh, little uh, tray of colored pencils, it came with a little brush, like a wa uh, watercolor brush. And, and you can totally use that. That's absolutely fine. However, this uh, water brush that I'm using, like I said, it's affordable. It was like $7. You fill it up, you unscrew the top and fill up the reservoir with water. And then you can control the flow by squeezing the brush. Um, and the, you know, I got the medium. I believe there's, there's three or four different types. And by that, I mean, there's the very, very fine brush, there's the medium brush, and then there's a, a fat brush for like larger, um, you know, more abstract kind of uh, work. Um, but this medium brush, I've really enjoyed it. It's worked perfect for my uses. I love it because I can take this to coffee shops um, and sit down and it's not a lot, you know, it's uh, while I'm sipping on my coffee, I can have all of this material laid out, you know, just like I have it on the table here in the video but it doesn't take up much space and I can work on a sketch and then pack it all away. Um, and it's hard to say that you can do that with, you know, I can't roll up in Starbucks with a box of acrylic paints and kind of do the same thing. Uh, it might draw too much attention. But again, you know, using the water brush, it's like a, a second step. It's like an evolution. It's like the caterpillar becomes the butterfly. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? In terms of the facial features, it really kind of blends all the, the, the pencil work together and um, fleshes out the piece. And when I, when I bust out the brush, I usually like to start with the facial features because um, that's the areas of most detail. So I try and focus on the detailed stuff first, and then I can kind of be more liberal and generous with my strokes and my water when I go down to like the clothes. So I guess I want to say, while I have a little bit uh, more time, a few things about my channel. I've, I've, I've been making videos off and on for a long time and experimented with different kinds of videos. Um, I'm not going to say that this is always going to be a watercolor sketch channel. That's just, you know, I, I think I enjoy this medium and I intend to explore it for a while, but um, that doesn't mean I'm not going to do other types of videos too. Um, but if you enjoy this content, I urge you to explore the other types of videos on, on here. I mean, some of the videos um, were made during different phases in my life, but they, they're, they're, some of them are more uh, unfinished experiments, and some of them are more polished kind of pieces that I, I spent a long time on. Um, but it's all part of the same you know, artistic journey and trying to express myself and experiment. And uh, I think you will find some themes running throughout um, um, all the different types of content I have on here. Um, one thing I like to experiment with is, you know, um, expressing philosophy or complex ideas. 
uh, but trying to translate it into a poetic or you know fictional or more um, expressive form and sometimes that work has resulted in kind of dense work that's a little you know um, you know it requires a little bit of focus and concentration and that's probably um, something I would like to improve to you know I, my, my favorite artist of all time is George Lucas uh, the director of Star Wars um, and I'm sure I you will you will see little references or hints of Star Wars throughout my channel and um, there's sure to be more but you know I think he is an example of someone that took very deep ideas but presented them in a uh, a pure and simple way that's uh, universal and, and, and that's something that um, I'm, I'm interested in exploring. Um, a couple other things about my channel. So I, I turned off comments uh, because um, though I think technology as a means for communication is very interesting and powerful and there's a lot of benefits but me personally, I'm not a, a super social person. I don't have a ton of friends. I mean, I'm not anti-social, but um, I've never really been into the social media thing, and it's just not for me. I'm not very good at it. I mean, if you consider YouTube a social media platform, then I mean, I'm not trying to hate on all social media or say it's bad or anything. I'm just saying for me personally, I'm not very good at communicating in a public internet way. Uh, and by that I mean when people comment stuff and then I respond and it being like this public conversation, um, it's kind of like texting. I don't really like to text too much. I understand the convenience for certain forms of communication, in particular like, hey, let's meet up in five minutes. Okay, I'm here. Like texts can be beneficial for that. But the problem with text is uh, I find it's very difficult to get my uh, tone and meaning across in a text and uh, it, it often leads to misunderstanding uh, so I, I just prefer not to use it now with comments it's even worse because I don't even know who the person is most of the time and they comment something and then I comment something back or do a response and uh, if we're not on the same page it, it can come across and lead to miscommunication and uh, eventually conflict, you know, unfortunately. Um, and also, you know, some, some of the comments that come in are seem very much uh, from whoever is typing in the comment is the, going through their own uh, problems and issues and concerns and priorities. So sometimes it's not even directly related to what the video is about. So, you, you know, if, if someone wanted to get in touch with me, I believe there's maybe ways in YouTube to send a message and, you know, that might be interesting. But uh, for now, at least, I just want to put out videos. You can watch them if you like them. You know, it's not really about with the audience in mind at this point. It's more... I need to express myself and put this out there. Um, you know, I have a uh, a job where you know, you know this. So this is a a hobby and a um, something I really do for personal relaxation and stress relief, artistic expression, uh, personal growth. Those are really the motivations. It's not how it's received by the world. I mean, I know I'm not a uh, expert Norman Rockwell portrait artist or Michelangelo or da Vinci um, but I'm, I'm proud of my work and, and some some work more than others but um, I do it because I, I want to express myself and explore myself and develop my skills creativity is very important to me it's always been uh, important to me um, so yeah, so, so this is just one uh, aspect or one, one part of expression. But, um, you know, as I make videos, I guess what I was trying to say is there's, there's, gonna, there's diverse content on the channel. 
I've been doing it for a while and uh, I expect it to grow and change as I grow along. Um, but now, you know, the piece is starting to wrap up. You can see that some of the colors respond to the water very dramatically. The reds and the browns really popped and kind of uh, dominate, you know, whereas some of the other colors respond a little bit more subtly. And I'm still learning and working with and experimenting with um, how this medium works, how it reacts to water, all of those kinds of things. Um, but, but this is the portrait of the woman uh, study of a woman um, thank you so much for watching and uh, have a great day